Hey guys, I just thought I should let you know before this review starts that the music you're serving as the background music is actually the real in-game music for Redcon, courtesy of Hexage. Normally I use royalty-free music, but in this case they were gracious enough to let me use it for the purposes of my review video. Hey guys, it's Bear in a Backpack, and today I'm going to be looking at Redcon, an indie strategy game developed by Hexage, an independent game studio based in Prague, that have been developing games for mobile for a while and have since started to port some of their games to other platforms. The basic story of Redcon is that you were fighting in the far future in an alternate reality in which the First World War never ended. You play as a strike commander who is the leader of a firebase that is in charge of attacking the enemy positions, and the enemy in this case are the Crux, a militant group led by the traitor general Kranz. And your job is basically just to annihilate them in any way possible. So you're fighting against the Crux, well that's all well and nice, but who are you fighting for? I mean that's an interesting bit, right? Well, you're actually fighting for the Empire State. No, not New York, just the Empire State. It's coincidence, really. And the Empire State is led by a, well, less than charismatic leader known as the Fuhrer. Nope, not that one. Nope, not that one either. Get closer, not, but no, no, not that one. Up, oh, up, oh, oh, wait, wait, there you go, that one. Yep, that guy. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bit strange. It's kind of weird. It also doesn't help that the insignia for your particular side of the war is... Well, how do I put this? Let's just say it's a little bit sketchy. Now, sketchy imagery aside, you can tell that they're making fun of the leader the entire time. In fact, oftentimes when you open up the main menu, there'll be a large poster featuring the Fuhrer with words that read Imperator Semper Rectum next to it. Clearly, you're not supposed to take this seriously, so, I mean, it's all in good fun. When you first start the campaign, you're put into a tutorial section that teaches you how to play the game, how to use the weapons, how to strategize a little bit, you know, kind of what to target, how to use the weapons effectively, how to kill enemy infantry a lot easier, you know, how to trap them, that kind of thing. And it's really helpful. It's really a good way to introduce the players into the game. In order to run your fortress effectively, there's a lot of things you have to master in this game. It's surprisingly deep for a mobile type game. Now there's a lot of different moving pieces to your war fortress. You have your weapons, your crew, your utilities, your perks, and your defenses. There are many different types of weapons in Redcon, and these can vary from anything from heavy mortars, heavy artillery, light artillery, you know, just kind of like small cannons. There's lasers, EMP guns, there's rockets, there's many different types of guns throughout the game, and you just kind of get more and more as you play. When you're managing your fortress, you do have to be mindful of your ammunition and energy, the two main resources in Redcon. Now, you start off with a full bar of these, and those are shown in the bottom left, and having certain utilities, such as the ammunition depot or a generator, allow you to generate additional energy or ammunition. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, it turns out that if you have a surplus of ammunition or, or energy, it allows you to run your weapons faster, they'll fire quicker, and they'll be more efficient in general. However, if you have a deficit, they'll start running slower, and there's different levels to this depending on how much of a deficit you have. So if you don't have very much ammo at all, you're starting to run really low, you're using up too many power-ups, that kind of thing, what will happen is your guns will start firing extremely slow. And this is really bad because that means the enemy is going to get more shots off than you, and you're going to start losing the fight. Now for energy, if you start running out of energy, certain guns may not even be able to fire at all, and you'll have to turn them off to generate more energy. And certain guns like the EMP cannon can actually drain energy from you, and that's kind of one thing that kind of tends to make them a priority target when you're fighting in the game. If you look closely inside your fort, you'll see that you have several crew members. Now these little guys are really important because they allow you to repair your fortress when it takes damage, put out fires if they get started within the fortress, and fires are really dangerous because they can spread to different rooms and end up taking out your fortress if you don't deal with them. And if they're used on utilities and weapons, they can increase the speed and efficiency of the room they're in. Now this is really important for generating extra ammunition, extra energy, and actually giving you a little bit of an edge on your enemy when firing weapons just a little bit faster. And you'd be surprised, it really does help sometimes. The enemy crew is of course trying to do the same thing as yours is. And that's why it's extremely important to try and kill them off as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, this is a lot of times easier said than done. It turns out the enemy crew tends to have a thick sense about when they're about to be hit by a shell, and a lot of times this can get extremely frustrating, because you'll have an enemy crew member down to the last little sliver of health, and you'll fire a shredder round from a mortar that excels at killing infantry, and what will happen is when it gets really close to them, 
for seemingly no reason at all, they'll just suddenly run out of the room as if they knew it was coming. Now, this would be okay if they had ballistic radar, because that's kind of the whole point. If you have the ballistic radar utility, it alerts you to which room is about to be hit by an enemy shell. So, in that case, you know, okay, whatever, that makes sense. But, the unfortunate part is, the CPU controlling the enemy players will do this whether or not they have it, and it gets really annoying, because you'll be, like I said, just about to kill somebody, and they'll just run out of the room suddenly. It gets super annoying, and I think it really just drags out the game unnecessarily a lot of times. There are three ways to win in Redcon, capture, attrition, and total destruction. In order to win by capture, you need to send your own infantry over to the enemy base and have them kill off the personnel and destroy all the rooms. Now this can be kind of difficult because in order to get them over there you have to use a blimp. Building the blimp isn't the hard part, but getting it over there without getting it destroyed is the hard part because a lot of times the enemy fortress will have defensive that will very quickly destroy the blimp and kill all the crew you've committed to it inside, leaving you completely vulnerable and probably losing you the game. So this method of winning is actually kind of risky and is, for me personally, I wouldn't recommend it. It tends to be a kind of a problem. You can also win by attrition by damaging the enemy base and depleting its overall base health completely to zero. Every time you hit the enemy base, you're doing damage to not only the room and any personnel inside, but also the overall base health. If you do this enough and deplete the bar, you win. Finally, you can win by complete annihilation. Now, you do this by killing off all the enemy personnel as well as destroying all of the rooms in their fortress. Once you beat the first few missions that serve as a tutorial for Redcon, you're given the ability to customize your fortress. So what this is, is it allows you to pick from a few layouts of your fortress that give you different rooms, such as more weapons, more utilities, more defenses, that kind of thing, and then allows you to buy rooms, weapons, defenses, utilities, and place them how you want around your fortress. Another couple features that are really important to the game are the reset and concede options. So if you've started a battle and it's not really going your way, you're having a lot of trouble beating things, and you're taking a lot of hits, and you don't think it's going to pan out, you do have the option to reset the level from the start and try again. And if you find that you're having a really, really hard time and don't think you could ever possibly beat it with your current setup, you can actually go and concede the battle, which will let you return to the fortress creation part, the customization aspect, and rearrange your fortress to something that you think might do a little better. Now, one kind of major design flaw of the game is the fact that you can't sell back anything once you bought it. Now, what this ends up meaning is that once you've bought things, and you might be low on money, you can't buy items you might need to actually be able to beat the next level. So you end up getting stuck, unable to proceed. Now you might be thinking, oh, well I can just go back and play levels to get more money, right? Well, you can't. There's actually not a level select option, you just have to keep progressing through the game forward and forward, never backward. Now, this would normally be okay, again, if you could sell back items and rearrange that way, but you can't. So these two things compound with each other and make it so that you can very easily get stuck. Now you do have the option to reset the game and start from the beginning if you get stuck, but the problem is the game's really long, it's like 100 plus levels, so you might be on level 20 or 30 when you get stuck and have to restart. By the time you're to that point, that's several hours into the game, and who wants to restart from that point? So I think if they really wanted to fix this, they would have to add in a level select or a way to sell back items, then it would fix it and it'd be fine. But as of right now, that's kind of a major downside of the game. Moving on to the sound design, the music within the game does a really good job of complementing the visual aesthetic of the game. There's a lot of clockwork sounds, ticking, clicking, clanging, things like that that go on in the background that when in addition to the electronic theme of the music really helps kind of pull everything together. As for the sound effects, well there's a lot to it. There's the sound effects for your little guys moving about, you know, them doing their jackhammering thing when they're destroying a base from the inside. You know, them kind of panicking and screaming and running about when they're about to be hit by a round. The sounds of them exploding when hit by said round, if they die from it. You know, they have coughing noises when they're being choked by the neurotoxin gas. You know, there's a lot of stuff. Gruesome, but, you know, there's a lot of detail to it. The gun sounds themselves are also varied. Each weapon has its own style of sound, at least the weapon type. So, you know, the rockets have their own kind of blast-off noise and kind of soaring noise they make as they travel through the air. The mortars have their own kind of thud when they fire, same thing with the heavy artillery. And to kind of emphasize the, well, weak portion of the artillery, the basilisk cannons, the starting cannons, they have a very light thud that kind of plays up the fact that they're not really all that strong and don't do a ton of damage. So it kind of really complements everything pretty well. The artist for Redcon did a really good job of making the alternate history be felt. 
you can definitely see a lot of the influence of World War I from the doughboy helmets that the little crewmen wear, as well as their gas masks, to the types of guns and weapons that are in use. Now, given they did add a sci-fi aspect by kind of updating everything and making it feel futuristic, you know, when it comes to the EMP cannon, the kinetic energy shields, the solar beams, things like that, you know, they kind of updated everything, but still kind of brought that aspect of World War I into it. Additionally, all the characters, guns, and rooms have a very cartoony feel to them. In fact, they kind of bounce around when they're just idle. And, you know, it's not altogether unwelcome. For this style of game, I think it really helps, actually. At this point, we're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of the game. On the pro side, it does have a very robust strategy element that's surprisingly deep for this type of game. There's a large variety in weapons. The soundtrack itself is actually pretty fun. It has simple but fun game mechanics. You know, they're quick to learn, not too hard to start to get the feeling for, but it does take a little while to master them. Uh, it has a pretty good customization element. It's fun to kind of change the layout of the fortress and change around weapons to see what works and what doesn't. And overall, it does actually have a pretty long campaign, so you do get a lot for your money. Given the game is only $5, you get a lot of content for it. On the con side, there is no level select or ability to replay levels, and you know, kind of what we talked about earlier, this can get you stuck, and it can be kind of unfortunate. There's no option to sell items, which also can get you stuck, because since there's no way to earn money from replaying levels, and you can't sell things back, you can end up in a situation where you can't buy what you need to win. It can get kind of repetitive. I mean, in general, it's kind of the same thing. You're pretty much always trying to kill off the crewmen, trying to destroy all the, the rooms, kind of picking your targets. I mean, each battle is a little bit different. You know, you're having to focus on different weapons because some weapons at the time might be more lethal to you than others. But in general, it's kind of the same thing. And especially after quite a few hours of playing it, with especially with 100 levels, you're going to start to feel this after a while. And the campaign, as we said before, was long, but it's... Well, it's really long. Like I said, there's about a hundred so levels, and it kind of gets draining after a while. Now for the ratings. For gameplay, 7.5 out of 10. Story, 5 out of 10. Sound, 7.5 out of 10. Graphics, 6.5 out of 10. Content versus cost, 8 out of 10. So that gives us an overall rating of 6.9 out of 10. If you'd like to buy Redcon and play it for yourself, you can purchase it on the Steam Store, as well as the iPhone, Android, and Mac. Well that's the end of today's review, if you've liked what you saw, please leave a like or comment down below, and subscribe if you want to see more gaming content and other reviews in the future.